Welcome back, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. If you are not new, thank you for tuning in. As always, you already know what we're going to do today. We are here to talk about... Toxic masculinity and the black community. Yes, ma'am. Well, no one got an introduction. Hi, I'm Justin. Oh, I'm sorry. And so, you guys, I think you're going to know this, though. Huh? From our couples YouTube channel. This is my boyfriend, Justin. Saying, He's also known as Humane Hondo and Rick the Don. Thank you so much for being with us again. We love, like a side note, we loved your comedy special. Thank you. Thank you. We Very sat here and just, it was hilarious. It was actually very funny, very funny, very interesting, very entertaining. Um, also, before we get into today's video, this is my new favorite shirt. It says, love, your love yourself in all different colors. And the bottom says, very bottom says, you're worth it. I will include the link to get this shirt in the description. It is, once again, his t-shirt company. And so please invest and take the time to, you know, support. And that's justleak.com, J-U-S-T-L-E-A-K-D.com. You know what I'm saying? Right. Jews, come get some love. And I am wearing, um, you know, my downtown uniform for when I'm not the Maroon Power Ranger. Mm. You feel me? This is exclusive. You can't get it. Super cool. But you better stop or you get a suit. You wear Nike. Stop <laughs> playing <laughs> for they like. <laughs> what are you nah, that's a check. Yeah. Stop playing for these That's a check. That's my Zordon check. What you mean? Oh my gosh. So, have at it. All right. Alrighty. So, so cool. So, with this being our third time, I'm going to bring back this fire question because this is something that we need to talk about as black men. Um, how many times, let's see if I remember the question, how, uh, uh, as a black man, how many times have you been told, I love you? How many times have you heard the words, I love you? And in these words, how many times have they come from another man? Um, so I am in a family that's predominantly run by women. So, um, you know, the women in my life, of course, have no issue with telling me that they love me. Um, I hear that from them, you know, just about as much as I, I think, you know, a regular person would hear from them, you know, hellos and goodbyes, you know, especially like when I'm getting off the phone type of thing. They'll tell me that. Um, as for how many times I've heard it by another man, very, very minimum, very, very minimum. Um Especially, like, with my dad, not that often, but I probably, I could count on, the no, like, the number of times on my hand, you know, in my 22 years of life, so. Why is that? Why, you know, why? But, but, but before we get to that, before you even get to the why, right, like, you said that you didn't hear it too many times from your father, right? You could count mm -hmm. on yeah, and it's like I feel like I sympathize with that like I live with my father and I can count how many times like I really heard the words but uh it's not like I don't feel it exactly know? it's not like I ever felt like there wasn't any love or there was a lack of love or anything like that like it was just shown in different ways through actions through lessons through all that good stuff you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the roof over your head, the, the clothes on your back, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it's not even, you want to make sure that's thrown out there too. Like, <laughs> it's the, you don't, you don't get the, you don't get the, I love you too often, but you definitely feel it, you know? Yeah. But now the why, like, like she asked, why do you feel as though uh, that's the case? Um, I think that is it's just not normalized at least in their generation maybe uh and uh i see it seeping through in our generation and then to future generations of just males not being very emotional um or if anything in, intact with their own emotions you know or comfortable enough to express them sure. but, so you know, it 
that if anything. So, you know, like uh, my father, he's he's a very headstrong person, very stubborn, um, but in his own ways, hardworking. You know, uh, I, I know he loves his family. Like, um, like you said, through actions rather than necessarily the word he speaks. Um, but, you know, as for just vocalizing that, subpar. Right. And, and it's, it, uh, it's a trickle or it has a trickling effect, right? So mm-hmm. it starts with you and your pops, you know, that relationship that, you know, that's a little bit, you know, weird, however, or weird in uh, how you guys interact, right? And then it goes mm-hmm. to you and your people. You know, you run down, you, you go and talk to your mans, and it's like, you're hard pressed to hear the words, I love you from your mans. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Oh, I love that nigga, or, or, or love that man. Anything else? Besides- it's it's a it's always a variation of that, um, because it's never a straight up "I love you" right. or "I love you, bro." It's it's yeah. always a variation now, like now, "Love that man." Black men. Mm. So now black, that's black men. Now that's black men. You know, with, with our white friends, they real cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Our cool. white friends will will express their undying loyalty, admiration, and love for you without hesitation, unprovoked. They, they'll, Tariq, in your eyes, they'll look you into the windows of your soul and say, hey, yo, like, I love you, bro. Yo, bro. Like, bro. Yo, bro. Bro, don't look at folk. Bro. 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 I'll let you know, bro. I love you, bro. You, bro. And, then, and then try to get personal with it. Like, I've never been more dead ass in my life. Like, who taught you how to say dead ass? Like, I've never been more dead ass in my life. Like, I love you. Like, all right, Kev. Like, <laughs> I but love you too, bro. White people, no, I won't say white people. White men, young white men, can feel more comfortable with their emotions because they are safer. They have the time, too. Mm-hmm. At the time, but they're just safer. They're safer. It, it, they, they, they're they've had, they've had the environment to do so. Yeah, their, their, their like, manhood is, isn't compromised by showing emotion, being who they mm-hmm. actually are, but it sounds like young black men No, like, like they, get taught, they, they get taught to, or they get that, that lesson, like, yo, mm-hmm. you have to work through feeling this, you're feeling this because of that. Most of the time, us as black men, we're trying to survive. <laughs> when you're surviving, you don't have time to understand why you're sad or you know, uh, 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 why you may be feeling depressed. Or, no, mm-hmm. you, you got stuff to do. But like, as we sit like, and reflect, we can say that young black men are suppressed. Your emotions for sure. are suppressed. Yeah. You know, and and white young men don't have to feel that way. They don't have to carry that burden of, mm-hmm. you know, compromising their man- manhood and reputation, and et cetera. I was staying with a, a, a couple white friends this summer and um, he, I can see uh, that their family uh, gives them the opportunity to express those emotions without necessarily like backlash. It's always a conversation with them, you know? Um, he, he did something that I thought was just otherworldly, but to him, was probably as regular as possible. He had um, I came downstairs upset about something, and he was just like, like I'm just so pissed off. And his mom was like, Oh, like why? Oh, what's going on? He was like, I'm. We lost. He you. said, oh, There yeah. we go. He said, I'm so pissed off, and he was like, and I was, and his mom was like, Why? And he got to spill and vent all of that, you know, right then and there while she sat there and listened and, you know, gave feedback, was an active listener with it and, and whatnot. And it's just like, oh, shit, like, that's that's profound, you know? And I can only think back to a time. And I don't think, like, it was necessarily a situation out of malice or, you know, that she didn't care. But I remember a time, you know, a, like, hey, mom, like, I'm, 
really depressed. And what you got to be depressed about? You got you got food on your plate. You got clothes on your back. You got a roof over. You know, like, and I I I get it. Like I feel you. Like I feel you. But your boy still sad. <laughs> so like. <laughs> Something, something going on, you know? <laughs> like, can you help me get to the bottom of it? But it's it's just that. And, you know, they, they chalk up everything that we have to blessings. And, yeah, I'm blessed. Um, but I'm still a human being. And and when, when I try to step outside of my box of not showing those emotions and being strong all the time, and then I'm telling you, hey, this is how I feel, and you punch me back into the box. Now I'm not coming out no more, you know? That's that type of shit. And it's like... And I think... How bad do you think you... No, go ahead. Um, now, like, you know, hearing you talk, I kind of, like, I, I sympathize, but only, like, to a point. Only because, like, you know, you ain't shout Latrice and Jason. But mm. uh, they, they... It may have... They open that up to me, you know what I'm saying? Like they allow for uh, those lines of communication. Um, it may start off rocky. I may get the the yo. What you what you got to be sad about? We you you chilling? What you got to be feeling any type of way about? But then it's like after that, you you sit down and then you realize like yo, all right, they do have whatever and they still are feeling whatever. So like, let me see what's going on. Talk me, figure out. You know what I'm saying? What's what's uh, uh, bothering my child, and I feel like you know that's something that should be like uh, a message that should be spread. That should be a thing. Words. Yeah, that should be a thing. Like just as just as just as as much as you know, providing a shelter and uh, providing <clears throat> uh, substance and all that. The stuff necessities. The necessities. Like. like uh, Tending to the mind should be too, you know? Yeah, yeah. Men mental health is just as important as whether I'm starving or not, right. you know? What, whether I'm cold in the winter or not. My, my, my mental health is all as important as the physical needs. Um, and it's, I just felt, I, I just feel like if you don't, if you don't, cater to all of the needs um then you're lacking in something and uh it can either be detrimental to the growth of your child or it can be you know something that they will eventually uh turn into something that they focus on in their parenthood you know um it could go either or um i heard somewhere that your love language is something that um you used to that you lack growing up in childhood i've also heard the opposite that your love language is something that you always gotten um so i think it could sway in either way but you know that gamble is not worth it it's, <laughs> yeah it's not worth it it's not worth it it's not worth so it so i just i rather i rather hit all the points than you know then no, leave it up to chance like i feel like um, I don't even I don't even know if I'll go and say young black parents, but young parents in general, when you don't when you when you say oh you have this you have that you have a house you have food you have clothes, when you um are throwing the necessity like well, your job like what you're supposed to do when you're throwing mm -hmm. the necessities out there you're like making a person feel this big this big this big this big and then they're like okay yeah I have everything that I need. So I, I shouldn't feel any type of way. I shouldn't be sad. I don't have a right to be sad. And then <clears throat> as you get older, it's, oh, well, you're not paying bills. So why do you feel any type right. of way? Yeah, so that, that, that suppresses just... people and their emotions. And then they grow up to be insane or they grow up to go to prison. And it all could have been fixed at a very young age by you just taking that extra step. It's, 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 it's more than, you know, more than just, and I'm not a parent, but just more than I can say, you know, from my parents, I can say in like within my um, my childhood growing up, what I don't want to do is say, you have this, you have that, throw all the things at them that I know I'm supposed to be doing as a parent, as a mother, and suppress mm -hmm. their emotions. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm not a parent, but I do understand that 
right is right and wrong is wrong. And I understand that when I was thrown, oh, you have this, you have that. I made, I too felt small. I too felt like, damn, I can't talk to them. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to mm-hmm. do. You know what I mean? And that behavior just, it trickles. It just trickles. And within everything that I did, going to school, you know, like when I would, I don't even know, like, like just anything that I did, interacting with my friends, like everything that I did, it, it was, it was my childhood that affected me. And I just mm-hmm. feel like, you know, when I grow up, when I have my own children, I'm going to be, I want to be not only be their parent, but be their counselor, be, be their you know, where they can just feel safe, you know what I mean? Like, they can be able to come to me or be able to come to their father and just be like, okay, like, I can talk to my parents. I can feel important. And I think that is so important to just, you know what I mean? Like, treat people Mm -hmm. like, but not only that, but just make them understand that they are important, that just because they have the necessities and just because I'm doing the bare minimum like I'm supposed to be, doesn't make it right for me to just dismiss their feelings. No, the tricky part, And all of that also, too, is, you know, you said young parents and how they're addressing their kids and, uh, you know, I'm providing this, I'm providing that, I'm providing this, I'm providing that. We're talking about um, the mental health of the kid, but also, too, the mental health of the parent, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's important. And, you know, as we're talking, we're not even really thinking about, right, because as a, a parent, you know, who has a, a child young, you know, that's a huge responsibility. Um, yeah, sure. a tolling responsibility. So I can understand. So it's just like, I don't know. Um, I feel as though we got to take care of each other. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's also, you could, you could trace, you know, parenting back to their parents, right. you know, and, you, you know, you'll be like the, every once in a while you might, get a true a true open book out of out of your parent right and they'll they'll tell a story of you know way back when or back in the day you know or they'll tell you a story about their parents and then you'll be like now nah, i see exactly why you act the way that you no. are you know <laughs> you feel me like that now nah, i see why you act like that or <laughs> you feel me or or why you feel like you could just you know, do this, that, and the third, and I just be like, dang, like, I get it. Now I get it. Now now I see, now I see what I could avoid, <laughs> you but know, it's like. Stop, but it's got to stop here. But, like, yes. You know, yes. it's got to stop. Like, one thing that they used to do back in the day was, um, and I saw it was in a movie, like, a couple movies where um, father would grab a, like, a, they call it a twitch or switch. a switch. And yeah. It was like a, like a, a freaking oh, piece of tree. Oh, I get that switch a piece of tree and they beat their children in front Word. of like okay i get that ungodly shit but like <laughs> He's an no but that's i don't even oh it's ungodly pull their pants, down, <laughs> pull, their pants down, pull their underwear down and just whip them in, in front of people yeah like i said kids do dumb shit i get it but I, to me that is so insane to me that is just so and it's like i know it's a touchy subject too like I don't want to do it's like I, I had spankings growing up. You know what I'm mm. Like I, I understand the, the reasoning behind them, but then also too, like you know, like it directly uh, connects to sleep. Like the fact mm-hmm. that you know, as soon as you get out of line, is oh, I, I need to give you a couple lashes, so you know what's up. You know? Yeah. Like there's other ways to communicate, whatever, whatever. Like I, I was wild. Like I, I was, yeah, yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, yo I, I, I feel needed, you. I needed, I needed to be put in my place. I ain't gonna hold nobody. Yeah. Nothing like, yeah, the wild kid. But you know, I, you know, I just feel like there's different ways to handle situations like that. I, I think that if now. I know this is something that I think um a lot of people just think don't work but I'm a strong believer in in strict timeouts Mm. you know and uh like giving giving a kid an opportunity to legit sit along and think why they can't interact with society like it's it's literally the most minimized version 
or what prison feels like because that's exactly what happens when you become an adult you break the law you go to prison you know and so like when you as a child and you don't put that fear in them you're like oh if you keep doing this you're gonna like don't do that but it's more or less like hey like sit right here think about what you did wrong after you talk to them of course after you talk to them and explain what they did wrong sit right here think about it you know and i'll be back and then we can talk some more you know that type of thing if it you know if it's something minimal like and i i agree on that sentiment of when i was younger i was wild like so let me this, ask you this question this, let me ask you this question cuz i i was trying to let you finish but uh-huh, go ahead wow so look i was listening to you talk that wouldn't work with me, G. You would have sat here and had a conversation with me. You would have sat there and told mm-hmm. me. I would have been like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you would have walked mm-hmm. away. I would have had my time out. I would have sat there, played with my thumbs. You yeah, yeah. Back in the society. And this is so terrible to say out loud. But you would have been back in the society. I would have been bugging out still. Like, so, I feel like, like me, I needed, like, I needed physical, I needed physical repercussions. Mm-hmm didn't have to be me getting beat but like you know it, <laughs> I, was, I got right. into trouble so we, we figured out different ways to <laughs> handle on me getting yeah 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 so 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 working out stuff like that like so so when I was a young boy homework wasn't a thing for me mm-hmm. now when I uh, when I mean is I take that in the most literal sense possible if somebody wrote homework on the blackboard, it was a blank space to me. I can't yell. It was blank. Like, it, it just, it, bro, it was not happening. Like, it just, it, I refused. Like, you'd be like, hey, yo, do this. Because I always felt that whatever you taught me, we just did classwork. We spent the whole day learning it. <laughs> what do I got to take this back home oh for? We're about to come back review it anyway, take a quiz and learn some more about it. Like you see me five days out of the seven, you know? So that was my mentality, right? So I refused to do homework. Now that got me into trouble after trouble after trouble. And then it started to get accompanied, accompanied by lying about it and then just hiding it and this, that, and the third. So every beating that I got when I was young, I deserved, it. you feel me? Cause I just did not listen. I didn't listen, but then at the same time, nobody took the time to tell me, like, to talk to me as to why I wasn't doing it. There was never a question, you know, a conversation like, yo, why are you doing such and such? Right. Like, why do you feel like you have to do such and such? Or why did you do this? You know, like, I get the beating. You feel me? But not like, I get it. But not educating. It, just, right it was no education behind it. <laughs> I didn't fear. <laughs> I feared. <laughs> I feared. <laughs> Exactly. I feared not I doing my homework. I feared not doing my homework out of fear of getting a beat and not because of, A, like when you get into high school, you feel me, this matters. Or, you know, out of fear of failing or out of fear of being a bum, you know, that type of thing. Like, I didn't fear the the logistics of why homework is important. I feared the whooping, you know. And that's why when I got to Hershey in eighth grade, like and there was no whoopings behind doing <laughs> boy. <laughs> but, but what? There were, there were you know there were actually there were repercussions worse, though. There, there were repercussions. Worst forms of repercussion, like you lose money. Yeah. You lose money when you act crazy. Like that's not even worth it. And if, you, and if I had known yeah. that, I wouldn't have lost. I don't even know what I lost. My ninth and tenth or whatever, because. You know, you use that money later in life, and it, that was real. I yeah. thought all that money was fake. All these numbers, I'm like, whatever. And you graduate, and they're like, okay, yeah. So here's the money you have to work with, according based off of how you acted in high school. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> they and that and that's that's how I learned in eighth grade. After there was a stint, I have to shout out Mr. Bug and shout out Miss um uh, Mr. and Mrs. Peruli. In eighth grade, no homework being. Oh my God. Somebody hit your phone. What is that? Yeah, dog. Not disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> right. So in eighth grade, no homework being done, but Mr. Bug sat me down and he was just like, hey, yo, dog, like this is your GPA. You're not going anywhere after MHS if you continue this. So now I'm just like, all right, like, 
<laughs> Let me do a couple. Maybe a couple will set me right. Wait, no, but up. then... <laughs> so, that was the council is, bro. They be really... You feel like, me? Cutthroat. Like, that was my house parent, dog. They, yeah, they oh, telling me, they were like, they, they telling me, hey, yo, fam, like, you aren't going anywhere. Like, and they, they didn't even mean college-wise or job-wise. They meant life. You aren't going anywhere in life if you continue this this thing of, I don't need to do this because I'm too good because you could ace any test or you turn in, you feel me? Like, you do this, that, and the third, so it should make up. And then the Perulis, they instilled in me not fear of my future, but fear of the present. Whereas in, ah, you don't want to do homework? That's cool. Just go sit in your room for a little bit. All right, for how long? Until we tell you to come out. Ho! Oh. So now I'm sitting there at the desk. Mind you, eighth grade, we don't got no phones, no iPods. I got Percy Jackson, the series. You feel me? That was me at the desk reading for hours on end. And I'm just like, you know what, dog? Yeah. Whew. My, like... I just might as well, I might as well. Like, I just might as well. I might as well just do it. Because I'm not doing nothing right now. Like, I, you feel me? And so, like like Tiana said, when you, when we got to high school and they monetized your behavior and monetized okay. your, your GPA, that'll do it. <laughs> Especially for somebody who came from nothing. You promised me 80 grand if I just do homework? Hey, yo, bro. I gotta hit the books. I'm sure we didn't realize like, that, but we didn't even realize that, and that's crazy. It's just like I wish I had really actually known. And I'm not saying I don't have it. <laughs> I do have it. I still have that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so thankful for it. <laughs> Listen, right. But if I had known that I could be more, I could be better. I could be more involved in school activities. If I knew that being uh, intelligent was um, what 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 is it? It cool. was cool. Like I that being. Mm-hmm. Being um, intelligent wasn't something to brag about for me until I got to college, until I sat mm-hmm. in the classroom and I knew every single thing the professor was talking about. Oh, wow. Like, I knew this because I learned this in high school, but why didn't I pay more attention? Why didn't I challenge myself to be better, know better? It's, it's like um, there's this saying that it takes a village to raise a child, and it's true. Because if a, if a parent is at home teaching these kids, you know, the right way, like you said, like you have to kind of, if you want to give the reprimanding, you have to give the education. So they understand this is how it's going to affect you full circle. But then they go to school and the teachers don't give a shit and the counselors don't give a shit. Well, what are they going to do? Where are they spending most of their time? I mean, you know what I mean? So it's a full circle. Mm-hmm. The teachers have to be in on it. The counselors have to be in on it. The principals, the teach, like every, um, and the, what, what was it? Um, the parents. Yeah, the parents. The right. parents. The parents have to be in on it. All of that. It's a full circle. You cannot just... You know, you can't just invest all of your energy into, um, you know, just like, right. how, how do I say this? If we're parents, right, we cannot just teach our child to be the best we can be without understanding that we're not even providing them with the best resources, you know? We're sending them to the worst schools or, you know, we know that their teachers don't give a shit. We know the kids that they're hanging around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We have to come together as a community, as a black community, <laughs> as a black community and come together and educate our children and let them know we care. We care about your future and we want you mm-hmm. to care. And, and, and this is why, and these are the reasons why we're not just going to reprimand you. We're going to educate you. So you understand. So you push yourself. So you have a chance in this world to be better. We're not just going to discipline you and be right. you, you know, and right. I think that's my biggest thing. Like, you know, that's fine. You want to be your kid. Fine. But, explain to them what is going Why? on what's what's wrong like you know what i mean you have to kind of mm-hmm. everything has to come in full effect and i don't know who said it. i don't know if you said it i don't know if you said it but one of y'all said it um you said that every one third of a black man will yeah visit. yes what you wanna what was yes. that yes every one third and i did go back and fact check this every one third of every black man will face some type of jail slash prison time and that that can be attested to the school to prison pipeline that could be attested to you know social injustices that is just the way the system set it up is that literally a third of us will face some type of uh legal 
like legal troubles incarceration. and and then incarceration and then you know then you expect us to still be able to live these fulfilled lives with that blemish you know on our record and all we got left is to go back to the streets because you know that's what was working you know um very and you know like yeah we hear some survivor stories of how I changed my life around right. but that's why they're so special because it's so one in a few you know like it 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 just doesn't happen as effortlessly or as as perfect as you know the movies make it seem you know like it's celebrity exactly and when when you got your only people who faced incarceration <clears throat> being rappers or ball players like your options you think are limited like all right now that i've done you know a year in jail or a year in juvie i i got to be good at ball like or let me go to let me go hit this studio real quick because it's the only way i'm making money that is so you true you know and like, that is so true so many people that we graduated with are just trying to make music and it's like that's fine but educate yourself too right educate yourself get something going start a business do something have have backup plans. I think we we need to teach each other love in the community. Um, me and him, me and him, me and you, Bay. We were talking earlier. We were at the store or something. We were talking about how we need to teach love to each other. Um, you, you were talking about how people are like fake woke, and then they <laughs> spread that fake wokeness. And no, you know, no, tell them, explain because mm-hmm. that was like. Um, so like, I don't know. <clears throat> Everybody, with all of everything going on in the world, everybody wants to be down. Like, it seems like the trend, that seems like, but it's the trend to be woke. Yeah. The trend to, 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 to spew things out of your mouth um, and people take them serious. People think that you're deeper than, like, what you are or what you even really need to be because it's, necess- like, yeah. it's, it's not necessary to be deep all the time. <laughs> it's not necessary to be woke. <laughs> like, you know, a cup can just be yeah. a cup. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Was, exactly. You ain't never lost. No, I, I, you know, I only can pick it out so easily because, you know, I'm one of those type of people. Like, everything to me is a conspiracy. Everything to me is like 10 times, 10 shades deeper than you know, it probably ever is. That's just how I'm a Virgo. I, you know, it's always going. Oh yeah, his birthday's in a couple of days, guys. Um, He's turning like forty. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. crazy. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. Before before you continue, guys, I was on Instagram, and this is how the conversation started. I said feminism, I, and I read it out loud to him. I wanted to know what he thought. Feminism feels like terrorism to the men who benefit from women's oppression. Now that's true. For a lot of a lot in a lot of instances, a lot of cases, that's very true. You know, um, dudes, a lot of dudes feel like feel intimidated by women. You know, just uh, letting them be ahead of them, letting them get the dub before them, just letting them be, express themselves openly. Yo, that WAP song came out. Everybody, you had cats tripping, and I'm like, I don't know why. Oh. What reason? Like, I beg with it. <laughs> no, 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 Meg, come on. Him, 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 him. Yo, like, she, yo, she, you feel me? It was like this. I bangs with it. <laughs> Jim, Look, either way. Right? You have all these cats that, that trip over stuff like that. And those are the ones who, you know, that quote is talking about. Right? I understand that. But mm-hmm. then I also feel like, like, you have some people, a lot of people, just like in most other things, uh, they have their opinion in like um, their opinion is drawn from maybe one or two things. And because they may sympathize with that opinion, just even in the slightest bit, they're going the hardest. Like, that's just my whole MO. That's my life. Mm-hmm. And you have like, I, I remember speaking to a lot of feminists, uh, I'm not going to throw the quotations out there because every woman is a feminist, but uh, 
Well, I don't know if that's true because you got women that got me wrong. But <laughs> uh, I was talking to this girl a while back, and I just remember her talking to me about uh, women and things being equal and how men are the gatekeepers and men are in charge of everything and because they're in charge of everything they should just move out the way and because men don't just move <laughs> yeah because men don't just move out the way like uh like we're the pretty much like she was going off like we're like all this yeah. the scum of the whatever, earth whatever and it's like i feel you to a point right men yeah we hold a lot of stuff gatekeepers all that good stuff True. After after that though, like, like after that that fact, it's it's all opinion. Like we've shown, or history has shown how or what uh, causes change. And it's not one voice. It's not a couple voices. It's a unified movement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what they want, uh, fighting you, for their rights. Uh, women's suffrage, uh, 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 civil rights movement, gay all rights. That good stuff. Gay rights. Like, these people weren't just saying, okay, they're eventually going to move out the way, of, like, probably maybe sometime. So we can <laughs> just chill over here in the corner and, like, just talk bad until they do so. No, nah, like, like, they got out there and made change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to bring that yeah. idea. And now I know we're talking about like women feminism, bring that I bringing that idea back to the black community. What he also said was, we have to teach each other love. We have mm -hmm. to move in love, because if we're not, then we have women tearing down women better than men do. We have better than, men do. better than men do. We have destroyed communities. We have uneducated children. Um, you know, I mean, that could go on about the worst that can happen. We see we're all living right now. We're all seeing the world and what is becoming. Right. Um, I think just to conclude, we just all need to move in love as black people. We need to come together, educate each other and make it a thing that education is okay. Education is cool. And allowing black men to express love themselves. Cool. Love is cool. Love is okay. And especially mm -hmm. as black men, black gay men, be yourself, love yourself, you know, and if you're not a, a black gay man, if you're a whatever, just a regular black man, um, not saying they're not regular, but if you're just straight, it's okay to say, I love you. You're not gay. You're not feminine for it. Mm -hmm. Word, I love you is okay. And we shouldn't oppress the black community um, for that. So thank you guys so much Wait, for- Also to my bad real quick, right? We're talking a lot about black people and our community and all that good stuff. <laughs> and that's always important. But I feel like a lot of the problems that go on on the earth currently is because we're not loving each other as people, black people, white people, green mm -hmm. people, purple people, red people, Are people there that people? fly, people underground. Okay, yeah. If we yeah. spread more love, period, I feel as though we live a lot more comfortable. All right. And for everyone out there, that's of course, you know, we can't escape the current events of the world, but allow yourself to detach, you know, like we were just trying to explain, you don't have to be woke 94-7, you feel, you feel me, like, it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay to, to hop on YouTube, watch a funny video, it's okay to hop on, you know, Snapchat and post a good time, you know, you don't have to be sad, life is already hard as it is, as, a, as black people, as people, you know, like we just allow yourself to be happy, allow yourself to love, allow yourself to detach from the current events of the world, all for the sake of your mental health. That's that. Um, thank you very much. And just lastly, to close out, I want to say rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. He was yes. our Black Panther, our Black King. You know, he as everything that we're talking about was a black activist and he also too moved in love and moved in educating the black community. Um, I think that he was a great example of what we're talking about here today, everything that we're talking about here today. So I just wanted to, you know, share my condolences and just say, um, rest in peace to his earthly flesh, 
But as they say, we always continue on. We never are completely gone. And so it was just, you know, his time to continue on, journey on. But the way that he lived his life on this earth is a, an amazing, phenomenal example of it, exactly what we're talking about here today. So thank you both for talking with me. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I'll be back with more videos next week.